in this video we're going to do another Lego figure this time a Stormtrooper now I'm gonna just do it all from this picture I printed it to the size that I want to make it um, if you've seen my other YouTube videos for making little Lego figures you'll see some I do them this way and in others I make a little template and put the template on top so we'll do it this way around for this one so I'm gonna make it on a piece of greaseproof paper so it's easy to move around while we're making it so it doesn't stick to the board okay and we're gonna use some flour and modeling paste so I'll just get this out so I've just got the Renshaw one that I'm using for this time you can try all the different ones see which you find best to use now for this figure what I'm going to do is make him entirely in white and then I'm going to paint on the black afterwards. So we'll cut some of this off and it probably needs to be kneaded. It's quite thick. Now the flour and modelling paste is much firmer than the normal fondant. And it's easier to work with when you're making models or fine things like flowers. Um, you'll find it sets harder than normal fondant so it's not as likely to break. So once you've kneaded it so it's soft enough to use, just dust your work surface so that it doesn't stick while we roll it out. Now I'm using corn flour. This scruffy thing here is a pair of tights, obviously not worn, um, filled with corn flour, and it just makes it nice and easy for um, dusting your work surface. And I find corn flour is better than icing sugar when I'm doing my modelling. Okay, so we're going to roll this out and just make sure you haven't got any cracks in it. I've got a crack in the back of mine. Now. I'm keeping it nice and thick. We don't want it too thin. Okay, I'll just check it is thick enough. Okay. And I do have little green bits from my flower wires that have dropped off onto my board, so just be careful when you are rolling things out that you're not getting other things in it, like I have done. Okay. So I'll put it on my piece of greaseproof paper and I'm just going to hold it next to my picture. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, in fact I'll move it a little bit closer to make it a little bit easier, is following the top of the neckline I'm just going to put a line down there so that it falls on the top of the body so let's just make sure it's about level with the top of the body. Okay. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try and make the body in one rather than in several bits like I have done in the other videos. So rather than slicing through, we're going to line up with the bottom of the body there. And rather than slicing it, we're just going to put an indentation in like that. And then you want your next line where his waistband goes. And again, we're going to indent like so. And then the next line goes under the bottom of the curve on his legs. So I'm just going to turn it this way up to see if I'm doing it in line. So when I've got it upside down it's harder to tell. And again you've got another one just above his feet and then your last one for his feet. So just check that everything is lined up. Like I say, if you find it easier to cut this out and put it on your icing to make sure it is to size, then you can do that, that's fine. So I'm going to cut that bottom bit off. And what I'm going to do is use a modelling tool to indent these bits in his legs in the centre here. So I'm just going to use this one. Now I'll be honest, I don't know what it's called. Some of you guys will probably know what it's called. But it's just a PME um, brand one that I bought online. So between those two lines, I'm just going to push an indentation in, like so. Now my bottom line is disappearing a little bit, so if you need to put that in again, just draw that in with your modelling tool. You'll find that your icing does move around a little bit when you do this. Okay. And I'm just going to widen that line just a little bit. And what we're going to do now <clears throat> is we'll start with just a straight line down one side. And I'm going to make sure it's the same width as this. So what I'm going to do is put it on top like that. 
and I don't know if you can see on the camera very well but I can just see through where the other leg goes to there so I'm gonna cut that up there so it should be the same width now and I'm gonna move it back to the side just so I can check everything does still look like it's in the right the right uh, place, the right proportions. And I'm just going to narrow from the top to this waistline. I'm just going to cut off a small triangle like that. I'm going to do the same on the other side with his body. Okay, and we'll just move these bits to one side. So that's our very basic body shape and what we want to do now is cut a little bit out from the centre of the legs to give him two legs. You might find it easier to just mark the top bit as we don't need to cut this bit here where the black bit is. So I'm going to just put a tiny line where I think the centre is and I do apologise if I'm putting my head in the way. And then I'm going to put a tiny line either side and I always struggle to get things dead central. Okay, so they're my, my main markings and then I'm going to go down from that line like so and the centre bit I am going to just push my knife through it'll cut further than I need it to but we can push them back together, that's fine so we'll pull that bit out now just neaten that little bit at the back okay so that's your basic body shape Obviously, you know, the more times you, you do it, the, the easier you will find it is to do. It doesn't always end up perfect the first time you do it. I mean, when I do it, they end up slightly different each time. You just want to make sure that they do stand up, that you have got the feet flat on the bottom. Okay. So what we're going to do is add in some arms. And we'll also give them a couple of little hands. In fact, we'll make the hands first and then we can let them dry a little bit before adding them to the arms. So we're only going to need a really small amount for each of the hands. So I'm going to pull off a small ball. Now it might be a little bit smaller, this, so I'll just try it first. And I'll hold it against my picture. Yes, yeah, so I want a little bit more, just a little bit more to it. So I think we've got about that size. And what I want to do is roll the ball try and get another ball the same size so these hands will be similar in size okay now we're going to flatten that ball and then I'm going to squeeze it down so that it becomes a bit of an oval shape like so now we want to make it round so you can use the handle of a paintbrush for it that's fine to just put round like that and then just slide it off gently and it should give you a little Lego hand shape. So we'll just put that down there. Same again. And now we're going to roll out some arms. So just move that to one side a second. And we're going to just roll a long sausage shape to start with. Now for the width, just hold it against your picture. So I think mine's just a tiny bit thick. So I'll just pull that out just a little bit. And again, lengthwise for their arms. Their arms come just short of the bottom of the body, but they also have a slight bend. So what I'm gonna do is cut it to here. Now it still might look a little bit thick actually. So what I'll do is I'll put a bend in it and then see what it looks like still. Now, I'm just going to put a little line part way down where their arm would bend and hold it against. So I think I'm about happy with that size. So I'll do the same again for the other side. So when you've done each arm like that, what I'm going to do is just pop, using the bottom end of my paintbrush, I'm just going to pop a small little hole in just pushing it in so that when I attach the hand I can push it into the hand and it just sticks a little bit better or into the arm even. Just be careful that you don't widen the arm too much at the bottom. Okay. And then 
you're going to stick the arms on. I'm going to just use a bit of water. You can use edible glue, whichever you find works best. Now, you can have them straight down, or if you want to position them up at different angles, you can do. So, put a little bit of water on there. You don't want to put too much water on, otherwise you'll find that it just slips off your body rather than staying, staying put. Hopefully it won't slide about too much. Let's lift this one up slightly. And then we'll put this one down there. So made his arms are slightly too long, I think, but they don't look too bad, so we'll leave them as they are. Now hopefully those arms are gonna stay on. And what we're gonna do now paint up the body and then we'll add the head last. So I've got a really fine brush that we're going to use for painting the black on with and I've just got the Sugar Flare licorice one. Um, now this particular one that I've got is quite runny so I'm just going to use it as it is. In fact I might put it in the lid. If you do find it's a little bit thick you can add, I'm just adding a little bit of water to it because it's not a huge amount that we're painting on, but you can add um, white um, alcohol to it so that it stops it separating okay so what we're going to do is just paint everywhere that's black so we're going to paint this center bit here and then we're just going to paint these other bits on so he's got like a little line that comes up each side here now, if you have an edible printer, you can always print off the details and stick them on um, onto like edible sugar paper. Um, I don't have an edible printer, so I have to draw the things on by hand. Obviously, it is always neater if you can print it, but then at the same time, it is nice to have it hand drawn sometimes, I think. Okay, now, if you struggle with the painting, it might be that you don't want to add every single bit of detail. So you see I've got a shaky hand now while I'm trying to do this. And I'm just gonna water down the black just a little bit for doing this bit in the center of his chest where it's not as dark. the black again when we attach the hands but I would give that a couple of hours to dry a little bit so that we don't knock anything off. I'm just going to add a little bit of water there to make sure that that does stick where I want it to. Okay and we'll let that set. It doesn't need to fully set just a little bit and then we'll do the rest. So I'm just going to attach his hands, but I have got a little bit of black fondant, so I'm just putting a little bit of water in here. I've just given him an hour or so to start to set a little bit. And I'm just going to roll a little peg of black. Now it's probably going to be a little bit too big, so I'm going to take a little bit off the end. I'm just slotting it in that hole. And I'll just take off the extra bit. Just put a little bit of water at the end of each of the black bits. Probably put a bit much on that one. If you put too much on it, won't stick. And then we're just going to push these hands onto the black bits. so. Now if you want to give them a few minutes to dry you can do. And then what we'll do is we'll paint the hands black and in fact what we'll do is while we're waiting for the hands to set on there a little bit we'll do a head. Now the head I think is the hardest bit to do. So we're just going to take some more of our white modelling paste. Now 
you just want a ball for the head to start with so that's a bit big so let's go again so that's about the kind of size maybe slightly less that they want it's always worth holding it against your little lego figure to see if you think it's gonna gonna look right okay so i'll just need that to get rid of the creases that are in it the cracks and we're going to start by doing the head so we're going to start with a round ball and we're just going to kind of squash it down around the edges onto our board so that it changes the shape of it a little bit like so just check as well that it's staying in similar size okay now what we're going to do using a modeling tool we're gonna press a bit of an indentation down one side like that and the same at the other side like so which starts to create the shape of the helmet okay and we're gonna pinch this bit in the center like that to create a bit more shape. This is where I do apologise that I've got it upside down and I can't always see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, we're going to put in a little circle just using the bottom end of the paintbrush at either side like so. And then we're going to put a slight indentation at either side of those circles like that. going up there like so that will join into those lines at either side like that and then what we're going to do is draw a line from either of those circles upwards into the center like so And you do have to be careful that you don't squash the whole rest of the head like I'm doing. Now we're just going to bring this bit down a little bit here. Just checking all the time that he's still happy with the shape of his head. So mine looks a little bit smaller now than this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this little ridge partly up his helmet. Like so. And I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit underneath where we've put that ridge. Just put a little line above the ridge as well. Like so. So it's starting to take shape a little bit now. I'm going to put this indentation in up here. I'm going to bring that down at either side. side for around the other side of his eyes now I don't know how well you can see it with it being white so I'm hoping that you can see it but I'm not entirely sure that you can <laughs> so just play around getting the eye shapes in until you're happy with them okay we'll just Put this in again a little bit more as it's time to come out okay and then the rest what we'll do is we'll paint on so we'll give that a little bit of time to just harden a little bit 
and then we'll paint that up. I've given it a couple of hours just to firm it up just a little bit. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just paint the pattern to match the helmet. So it's got a little bit just down here. Again, I'm just using the same as before, the Sugar Flare Black, or Licorice Black, I think it's called. So you're just going to paint it up so it matches the picture. seconds to start to dry and what we'll do is we'll just paint up the hands just being careful not to knock them too much now you could do the hands in black if you preferred rather than like making it in the ice in black sorry rather than painting it on afterwards whichever way you find easier just gonna add a little bit of water to the top of the body and we'll stick a bit of a neck on before adding the head so we're just gonna take a small amount of the white flower paste I'm just gonna push that on the top of the neck just there a bit more water if you find it's not sticking you can try using a bit of royal icing as well which sticks things quite well okay and we're just gonna push that onto there like so and mine's got a little bit of a flat head at the top for a stormtrooper, so you want to make yours a little bit bigger. Okay, and that's it. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video and would like to see more, please click on the images of the other videos suggested. Also, please do subscribe to my channel using the button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. You can also visit my cake website and my Facebook page to see more cakes and ideas.